guys, this is Martin Perdomo, the Elite Strategist, and I have a really a, a real special guest today for you guys. It's a real treat because I've studied under this gentleman and I've attended his events and I've learned a bunch from, from Rod. Actually, Rod, you have a tool that you gave us at your event in January, which is the um, list of questions. You have two things that I've used quite a bit and I've shared with a lot of people, which is the... the list of questions you ask a partner before yeah, you get yes, into partnership? that yeah. one. That's that's super powerful. And we can talk about that yeah. as well. And I can give it to your peeps as well, because I, I they can text. In fact, let me just speak to that real quick so we don't miss it. Um, yep. So, you know, guys in this business, if we're talking multifamily, that is, um, it's a team sport. And so you're going to develop partnerships and partnerships are like a marriage. They're easy to get into, but they're hard to get out of. And so you want to ask all the hard questions up front. And I've got this resource of all the questions you should ask. So, you know, the, the, the painful ones you got to ask up front, what happens if somebody dies? What happens if we don't get along? You know, what happens at this, this, this. And if you text the word partnership to 72345, you can get the resource he's talking about. Um, partnership to 72345. But let me say one other thing before we move on. With a, with a partnership, trust your freaking gut. Okay. If something doesn't feel right, trust it because your brain is so powerful. It'll pick up on these micro nuances that you're not consciously aware of. You can feel it, but you don't know why. The great example is of this is in a movie. I'm, I'm sorry, in a book called Blink. Um, they, they talk about, you know, how people can make an instant perception of something. And they use an example of the best art critics in the world. I mean, art uh, experts in the world, they can look at a painting and they know that it's a fake, but they don't know why they know. It's the same thing when you meet a person. You got to trust your gut. Now, of course, women are better at this than men because they have better mm -hmm. intuition, but men can hone it as well. So, uh, but but yeah, get that book. Um, uh, it's very, very powerful. I, in fact, yeah. I used it about a year ago when I got my last partnership. So, Thank you, sir. Thank you for yeah. sharing that, Rod. And and, and I want to just share a little bit with the, with the, my audience about you. The, the other thing, the other tool that you have, also, if you could share, yeah. is the... Uh, questions for a property management. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. How to hire a third-party property yes, manager? That. Okay, that that is every possible question you can think of when you're hiring a third-party property manager. And what's great about it is, you know, if you're getting into a market and you're going to buy multifamily, you will learn more from interviewing third-party property management companies than you learn from any other a person that even brokers that you talk to property managers have their ear to the ground they know what the rents are they know what you know what businesses um are are bringing the uh, people to their properties they know what the competing properties are they 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 know who all the vendors are and all the contacts and so um if you want that book it's how to hire a third party property management company um text the word management to seven, two, three, four, five. In fact, I'll give you a better resource for that. Actually, it's in my link tree. That book for sure is. If you go to rodslinks.com, rodslinks.com, that's my link tree. It's got my boot camp website, it's got my podcast, got all my social media channels. It also has something that we should talk about, which is my goal setting workshop that you can, I do this at my boot camps. I've got a boot camp coming up, but the first thing we do is goals because how do you get anything if you don't know what it is? And at the bottom of that link tree, is the goal setting workshop I did on New Year's Day this year. I do it every year on the first with music, with a guide you can download. And you it's the same thing you did in LA when you came to my boot camp in LA. It's that goal setting because it's so freaking important, especially in what's coming. Because you know, we're headed for some pain in this country, and it's super important for you not to get caught up in, in the in the fear that's going to be all over the news after the midterms. I promise you, that's when it'll open up because they're holding off right now because of the election. But as soon as the midterms are over, it's you're going to think the world is falling apart in the news uh, because they're going to make it really ugly because they don't sell newspapers unless it's ugly. And so um, it's it, um, the goal, knowing what you want and focusing on what you want and not getting caught up in all that noise and that crap that they put on the news is going to be super important. So again, if you go to rodslinks.com, that, that property management book is there. In, there's a bunch of free books there. Uh, but that goal setting is there as well. And that, and I just encourage you to do it. Uh, you have your spouse do it. If you've got kids that are over 10 years old, have them do it. You know, as you know, Martin, people spend more time planning a freaking birthday party than they do designing their lives. And that, mm -hmm. that, that goal setting session helps you design your life. It's super powerful. I call it goal it setting is. on steroids. So yeah, it is yeah. very powerful guys. I've done it myself. I've, I've have both of those tools that Rod has given me the partnership question. I, mm -hmm. I, I've used it. Um, mm -hmm. Also, the management, property management, I just used it about a month ago in Virginia. We made an Thank offer, a 100-unit apartment building 
and I'm vouching for it. It's very powerful, very good stuff. And we learned a ton. You were right spot on. We learned more from the property management Mm -hmm. company than we did from the broker. Mm -hmm. Um, And I use a lot of those questions in there. So guys, I just want to start off with that because Rod's got a lot of value and we're not even into the podcast interview yet. But uh, Rod, Rod is is a seasoned investor. Rod, how many doors are you up to now? I know you invest in thousands. Kind of we'll just thousands. I don't like to brag about my door count, yeah. but I've <laughs> I've bought just to give you an idea. I bought I don't know almost five thousand in the last four yeah. years. So. so 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 Rod is just a real seasoned investor. I mean, we have a high level investor here, a known name in our space, and it's just an honor for me to have him here. I've oh, learned and you. studied from him, um, listened to his podcast. So go check out his podcast. He's got a lot of good stuff. Uh, we're kind of also traveled in the same circle. He's done some stuff with, with uh, Tony Robbins and so have mm-hmm. I. And um, mm-hmm. so good stuff, good men to learn from, but I want to just, I'm going to let you Rod, tell us a little bit about your story. Um, I sure. know you've shared in, and you've shared in your podcast and you also mm-hmm. shared in, in, in your events and your live events and even in your live, your Facebook lives. Cause I watch those sometimes um, mm-hmm. you shared how you lost $50 million in the last, in the last crash. Yep. And, I think we're, we're we're kind of on the same mindset that we're going into some painful times and in, in mm-hmm. the market in our country. I mm-hmm. agree with you. We're going into some some difficult times, and um, I want to really extrapolate a lot of those nuggets of wisdom that you got from that time, and sure. how you can apply. Sure. But first, tell us a little bit about about your story, who you are, and how you got through that, and and then we'll we'll get. Yeah, into I, I think it'll the add framework to what we're going to talk about. So I'm an immigrant. Uh, I was born in the Netherlands, you know, Holland, wooden shoes, windmills, Mm -hmm. Um, immigrated when I was six years old with my brother, Albert, my mother's Vansha. Uh, We ended up in Denver, Colorado, and we didn't have much. In fact, uh, we shopped at an expired food store because it was cheaper. We drank powdered milk with our cereal in the morning because it was cheaper than real milk. I I wore clothes from the Goodwill and the Salvation Army all the way through junior high school till I got disgusted when I was 14 and lied about my age at Burger King because I was tall and got a job flipping burgers when I was 14. Now, I'm sure you've got listeners that had it harder than I did and maybe even have it harder now, but I knew I wanted more. And luckily, my mom had an incredible work ethic. So she babysat kids so we'd have enough money to eat. We always had a house full of kids. But with her babysitting money, she was an entrepreneur. So she invested in the stock market successfully and IPOs, and she also invested in real estate. Now, her first real estate acquisition was the house right across the street from us when I was 14. She paid about $30,000. When I was 17, she told me she'd made $20,000 in her sleep that had gone up in value that much. And I'm like, what? You made 20 grand and you didn't do anything? Now, this is when 20 grand was a lot of money, by the way. Okay. And and so I'm like, screw college, mom. I'm getting into real estate. So I, I got into real estate My and I still lived at home. My first year in real estate, I made about eight grand. My second year, maybe 10 grand. But my third year, I made over $100,000. So what happened between year two and year three that caused me to 10X my income? Well, what happened was I met a guy I was working for him. He was a broker and um, I was dating his daughter and he taught me about the importance of mindset and psychology and how really 80 to 90% of your success in anything is just that, your mindset and psychology. Only 10 to 20% is the stuff, the technical stuff we talk about on our podcasts. Uh, Martin, as you know, it's it's you mm-hmm. got to actually take action with it. You got to push through fear. You got to push through limiting beliefs. You got to maybe get uncomfortable. You know, a lot of people are comfortable and that we all know that comfort zone is a nice warm place. And we also know mm-hmm. nothing freaking grows there. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, fast forward to today, I've owned over 2000 houses. I've rented long term. I own thousands of apartment units in 2006. My net worth went up 17 million dollars while I slept. And you might say, wow. And I said, wow. And I got a head so big, I could barely fit it through a door. I thought I was a real estate god. And you know when that happens, God of the universe will give you a nice little smack. Well, that's what you just alluded to. I lost $50 million in 2008 and 9. And so what I'm known for, you know, my podcast just broke 14 million downloads. And I talk about this a lot. I'm known for the mindset and psychology it took to have 50 million to lose in the first place, but maybe as important or even more important, the mindset it took to recover from losing that much. People killed themselves for losing that much in 2008, nine or less even, or proportionally in the Great Depression. And so, you know, happy to drill down on that as well, as well as Mm -hmm. what's happening economically, wherever you want to take this, my friend. Yeah, well, I'm going to let you lead with it, right? I want to, I want to start, let's start, let's talk about some of the similarities that you might be seeing in Mm -hmm. this market, if any, um, Compared to what you experience in OA, and and yeah. what are you what are you what is Rod Cleef doing right now after losing yeah. fifty mil? Um, well, well, eight. I mean, I, I, that was that was a long time ago. Now that was almost that was. fourteen years ago, fifteen years ago. Now, thank God. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but 
Um, but I will tell you, you know, 2000, I, uh, um, uh, the 19, I'm sorry, my brain just fried 2020 and 2021 felt a lot like 2006 and 2007. There was mm. a lot of greed. Okay. And in fact, you know, Warren Buffett's famous quote, be fearful when others are greedy, be greedy when others are fearful. Well, there's been a lot of greed these last couple of years and a lot of deals that have been done that are skinny, that shouldn't have been done. We've been in best and final, which is like the final auction process when you're bidding on a deal and, 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 and really sharpened our pencil. And then we're like, it sold for what? You know, how, how the hell did they pull that off? I mean, unless their investors are just blind. And so I think a lot of deals are going to go south. I think there was a lot of skinny deals, as well as a lot of deals done with bridge debt. And we can talk about that a little more as well. But here's the thing. You know, that period is now over, okay? The, 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 the fat lady is singing and, and, you know, the interest rates have gone way up. They're going to continue to go up. And I don't think it's going to curb inflation. I don't believe that's the solution because inflation's here because they print money like it's, like it's going out of style. In fact, those idiots just did this whole student loan thing where, which is supposed to cost the country about a trillion dollars. So that this was mm -hmm. yesterday or the day before. And, and you can't keep printing money and not have it destroy the economy. And that's what's happening. In fact, this year, this month, they had to print more money just to pay the foreign debt that we owe, the $30 trillion in foreign debt, the interest on it. OK, so so, you know, it's just craziness what's happening right now. And I don't I think that's why I think it's going to be a lot more painful than a lot of people think, you know. Um, so I, I, you know, love him or hate him. Trump said it's going to be a depression, not a recession. You know, Elon Musk and Warren Buffett both said it's going to be ugly. Uh, of course, Kiyosaki, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad has been saying it for years. It's going to be real ugly this time. So. You know, but but it's not something to fear. Honestly, it's something to get excited about. You know, if I wasn't hiding under a rock in 2009, licking my wounds, I'd be on the back of a 200 foot yacht right now because exponential wealth is made in a downturn. Everything's going on sale. So what am I doing to get ready? I'm in a lot of cash right now. I'm not spending any money. I told my beautiful, my, my wife is supermodel beautiful and I spoil her rotten with bags and handbags and sunglasses and wa and watches and shoes and in fact they just mm -hmm. she just had somebody here from sarasota magazine in her closet um videoing her today actually because she's got a closet that's worth probably half a million dollars but mm -hmm. but the point is i told her all that's done we're not spending any money now okay i love you but you're just going to get my love not my gifts and so mm -hmm. and she never expects them by the way she's not that kind of person but but i love spoiling her but the point is conserve cash right now okay keep keep your cash now here's the beautiful thing martin is you know, and you know this, multifamily takes money to buy, but it doesn't have to be your own money. There's so much money that's 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 got their butt kicked in the stock market. We won't even talk about crypto. I've seen people crying on TikTok, losing oh, yeah. millions on crypto. But the point is, you know, people want a safe, secure return and their money's getting killed by inflation. My money. I mean, I've got millions in the bank. It's killing me. It's like it's like going down every single month. But but I know that it's important to conserve it because, you know, again, cash is king in a crisis. But if you build relationships with people that have money and you pre-frame them, and then this is what I, I just had 850 people at my boot camp in Denver about on about a month ago. And we spent a lot of time on this topic, which is pre-framing your investors so they're not fearful when, you know, when the blood's running in the streets, because that's what'll happen. And so, you know, um, because that's the time to buy. And there will be unbelievable opportunities if you're ready and you've and you've and you learn this business you've built your relationships with investors um and um you know I'll mention let me mention my boot camp if you if you're interested in multifamily I've got a two-day boot camp coming up October 15th and 16th you can come for $97 okay hundred less than 100 bucks and I don't sell anything there it's just 16 to 18 hours of training with nothing being sold and it's most of what I train in my three-day boot camp that you went to I just have to cut out some of the some of the motivational stuff to get it into two days but it is drinking through a thick and fire hose okay I've had thousands mm -hmm. of people attend now never had a complaint other than the breaks are too short you know mm -hmm. they're 15-minute breaks every few hours and I promise you they're harder on me than they are on you because I got to eat and go to the bathroom and everything else in that 15 minute. But um, if it, here's the thing I want to say, Martin, um, is opportunity is coming, guys. You've got to pick your vehicle. Okay. If it's going to be multifamily, for God's sakes, come to my boot camp. It's going to be single family, go to somebody else's boot camp and learn that. If it's going to be buying businesses, go learn that. But don't wait. Do it right now because once we're in the thick of this and it's going to start getting ugly towards the end of the year, it's going to be too late because you've got to build the relationships now. You've got to learn how to evaluate deals. 
Um, you've got to really get up to speed as fast as you can to take advantage of what's coming. Because some people are saying it's going to be the greatest transfer of wealth in our lifetimes, if you're ready, okay? I'm talking legacy wealth for you, your kids, their kids, their kids, and their kids. That's what's coming. I really believe that. And so, again, um, don't be fearful. Be, you know, get excited. Um, learn whatever vehicle you're going to use conserve cash, build relationships with people that have money and say, hey, when it gets ugly, let's pounce on some stuff. And you're going to you're going to be really happy. Um, so, Rod, I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, so you you mentioned bridge debt a little. A little oh, yeah, while, yeah. Um, yeah. A little while ago. Where do you see where's the dangers that you're seeing there? Where do you, where tell you right now? What yeah. are you predicting to be the biggest opportunities in, in the multifamily space? And where yeah. do you see the biggest opportunities in real estate as a whole yeah. in, in the coming months? And I'm going to load it. I'm going to keep loading this question up. Okay. Well, well, I can tell you, I can tell you, uh, you know, in multifamily, the reason I know we're going to have some pain in multifamily is because of all that bridge debt. Okay. And a lot of these operators that have bought houses or bought, bought apartments these last couple of years are brand new or they're newer. They've never been through a crash. They didn't raise operating reserves. Like we have six months of expenses in the bank just in case this were to happen, in case, you know, we have some pullback because rents, you know, I can tell you, if you've got a C-class asset, those people are dying right now. They can't afford food, gas, rents have gone up. And I promise you, you're going to start seeing delinquencies, okay, which is why I'm focused on B assets right now. I had some C. Uh, I'm pretty much out of my C, thank God. But 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 here's the thing. Bridge debt is was was it, it, bridge debt is the single family home equivalent of hard money lenders. OK, that's really what that's that's how you would compare the two. If you've done hard money in single family, that's what bridge debt is commercial real estate. But it's there to bridge the gap between a non-performing asset that you can't borrow money on to fixing it up, stabilizing it, and then getting long-term fixed rate conforming debt, for example, and like Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. But here's the thing, it's been abused this last couple of years because, because Fannie and Freddie lowered the loan to value in, 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 and, and continually lowered it. Like we've got an asset under contract right now in Nashville, okay? Um, we are putting 60% loan to value debt on it, fixed rate, um, long-term debt. Um, I mean, it's a $33 million deal and we're raising 18 million. Okay. So, you know, and, and, and which is a huge raise for a $33 million deal, but that is extremely conservative because I wanted fixed rate debt, adjustable, a, a, a bridge debt is adjustable rate debt. Okay. Now, the, 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 but a lot of operators to get the returns that they had to project for in their investors, the, you know, the higher the loan to value you get, the more, the less money out of pocket, the better returns you're going to be able to show, right? And so they would get this bridge debt to show higher returns. But here's the problem. Again, that bridge debt is adjustable. Even if they paid for a rate cap, that typically only keeps it from going more, no more than 2%. 2% on a multi-million dollar deal increase in interest rate on debt is a big deal, okay? Mm -hmm. Then you couple that with, with people not paying their rent well, as this economy gets worse. I think there's going to be some real pain. Now, again, let me give you another example. Those The bridge debt is typically three-year debt. Now, you can get three-year with two one-year extensions, but five years is the most you'll ever get with bridge debt. So here's the definition of a bad day. You've got an asset you put bridge debt on. And if you ever see a graph with interest rates and cap rates, you'll notice that they pretty much parallel each other. If you look at 2008, nine, and you look at uh, interest rates, it's like a hump, interest rates and cap rates, okay? Now, as cap rates go up, values go down. So here's the definition of a bad day. You've got a nice, beautiful cash flowing asset, cap rates have gone up, and you can't get the value you need to either sell or refinance. That's a bad day, okay? Mm. And I think that's coming. So- um, you know, I, that's why, I, you know, I think bridge debt is going to really screw around a lot of people over these next year or two as this thing gets uglier. Now, um, again, not to be afraid, just get excited because there's going to be opportunity. I can tell you, we've seen deals that we were bidding on a year ago come back on the market that sold. They're back on the market right now, less than a, a year later, which is which just tells you those deals are in trouble. They're they're bailing as fast as they can. So, you know, um, I, I think we're going to see a reckoning. I really do. Now, you know, I don't pay attention to single family homes anymore, but I know that that's pretty much 
cliff as well. I mean, the you know the the sales have, have really dropped. Um, I, I host a mastermind, uh, Martin. It's the largest of its type. It's called the Multifamily Boardroom. We've got about sixteen billion in assets in it. We met. I don't know. I guess it's been about six weeks ago in Houston, and at that time. A lot of deals were under contract with these mastermind members that were there, and they were all being retraded at 10 to 12% at that time, okay? Meaning renegotiated, prices lowered. Um, we had a deal here in Sarasota that that um, we uh, we offered 38 million. They they say it went under contract for 44. Beautiful, I mean, gorgeous asset. But of course, three weeks later, we got a call. Hey, how's your 38? Is your $38 million offer still on the table? We're like, no, <laughs> but see, that's mm -hmm. what's happening right now. So anyway, I, I know there's going to be opportunity if you get ready and to capitalize on Now, You don't have to do these huge deals. There's going to be deals on duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, you know, smaller multifamily, even single family. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and other asset classes as well. I just, you know, I teach multifamily, but you know, there are other asset classes that are that are that are decent, like retail, shopping centers, self storage, mobile home parks, um, you know, uh, industrial uh, warehouse. Um, I I wouldn't touch office right now. That's just my two cents. But um, and even retail is a little scary right now. But self storage is really solid. Uh, office industrial is is doing really well. Um, so. Yeah. When do you think, in your opinion, Rod, when do you see, or you're, and none of us have a crystal ball, but right. uh, um, I would like to get your opinion on it. When do you really think we'll see the thick of this of this recession? Yeah, right? when, that's that's of, tough because I, I, it's going to be real interesting. It's going to depend on whether or not the political environment shifts in these midterms. Um, we won't go down that rabbit hole, but mm. um, you know, if if it doesn't shift and they keep spending money like they're spending. <laughs> Man, I think it's going to be a catastrophe. Okay, I, and it may be to that point already uh, because they're just—you uh, can't make this stuff up. The stupidity that we're seeing right now, mm -hmm. um, you know, like this student loan thing, buying by basically buying votes, just yep. insane. Uh, but 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 um, you know, I think it's going to—I think it's going to happen over time, and I think it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And and that's why you know, like I say, Trump said it's going to be a depression. Um, and, and, you know, love him or hate him. He's a pretty smart guy economically at least. Yes, and yes. so, 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 you know, um, uh, I, I, I think he's right. And it feels like that to me. And, and I go, it's hard to believe with, with employment as, as good as it is right now, but I just saw an article in Fox news, like a week ago that they surveyed a bunch of companies and half of them were laying people off in the next 30 to 60 days. Wow. Half of them, half of every company they surveyed, half of them were doing layoffs. And I've already been to a lot of big layoffs that aren't making the news. Again, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of political influence, especially on the left to news. Mm -hmm. And so, so, you know, you're not seeing that pain and that negativity because they don't want to, you know, lose the election. I think, I think that ship has sailed, but we'll see. But, yeah. but the bottom line is, is uh, I, that's why I think after the midterms, you're really going to read about the pain that's going on what's really happening and uh you know um yeah be real interesting to see but i you know i that's what i'm anticipating is after the midterms is when it's really going to start looking ugly it's fear will really pop in because they'll talk about how ugly it is and it'll stop spending spending's already massively stopped but it's really going to stop spending i think once that it's mainstream news all over the place and you know people get sucked into that so let me talk about that for a second you know, if you're sitting here watching or listening to Martin and I, you're a leader. And I'm going to tell you, the world needs leaders right now more than ever. And as a leader, you've got to pay attention to what you're focused on. Okay. Super important. You know, stand guard at the door to your mind. Keep out that crap that's on the news right now. It's there just to scare us and startle us. And most of it's complete BS anyway. So, minimize that stuff, bring in the good stuff. You know, I, I do these clips on my podcast every week called own your power. They're motivational clips. You give me five minutes once a week, I will juice you. There's hundreds of them there. Um, and, but I don't care if it's me or not, but bring in the good stuff, you know, go watch motivational clips on YouTube, you know, study, learn, you know, but protect yourself from the, from the negativity because what you focus on goes, lar gets larger, positive or negative. Okay. You know, like they asked mother Teresa, if she was anti-war, she said, no, I'm pro-peace, okay? Mm. It's good. just a play on words, but it's focus, right? I get people call me say, how do I get out of student loan debt? I'm like, well, um, why don't you ask the question, how do I make so much money so the debt's irrelevant, okay? Mm. Um, and, and 
you know, that whole student loan thing. My daughter worked her ass off. She, she didn't have any student loan debt. And now we get to pay for the people that didn't, you know, that's a, yep. anyway, don't get me started, but, 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 you know, so, so here's the thing in what's coming, you've got to create a burning desire. You've got to really want it. That's why the goal setting is so important. Okay. Do your goals super important because that burning desire is what's going to push you through fear, push you through limiting beliefs. You know, when I talk about limiting beliefs, when I immigrated this country, you know, I didn't speak English and I got thrown into school. And so I found out what bullies were for the first time and I got my butt kicked regularly. And then my mom thought it'd be a great idea, a proud Dutch woman that she was, to send me to school in wooden shoes and those leather shorts the Germans wear for Oktoberfest. So I got my butt kicked again. And then the bullies had chased me home from school and she chased them off with a fly swatter. So the next day, of course, I got my ass kicked again. And so I came up with this belief that I wasn't good enough. And, you know, a lot of people have these limiting beliefs, like I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not old enough, young enough, you know, have enough time, have enough money. There's a reason that the acronym for belief systems is BS because 99.99% of them are BS. But if you have one of those, you, you know, you've got to create that burning desire so you push through it, you push through the fear. And so, you know, after that burning desire, there's, there's a few more steps, but, the, you know, you got to make a decision. You got to decide enough is enough. I don't want to be in the same place a year from now than I am right now, unless I freaking love where I am right now. And the decision means it's done. You're not going to put one toe in the water. You're not putting a foot in the water. It's freaking done. Okay. When it's, when you make that decision, it's done. And then you've got to take that first step. You know, Dr. Martin Luther King said, you take that first step in faith and the next step will be revealed, you know, and if you're analytical, and you're one of those people that has to check off every single box. Don't do that because you're going to miss out. You're going to get caught in analysis paralysis. Remember this analogy, if that's you. You can drive all the way across the United States at night with your headlights only seeing 50 feet in front of you, and you know you'll make it. Now, you may have obstacles, but you know other people have made it before. It's the same way with multifamily or your goals, but you've got to take that first step. Um, and and, and um and then, and then you've got to manage your focus, like I said, um, because you're a leader. You wouldn't be here if you weren't a leader, and focus is going to be critical. Um, and it's one more piece. you got to play to your strengths, okay? In multifamily, there are lots of hats you can wear, okay? You can be the person that's building relationships, like like, like I'm sure you do, Martin, you're, you know, relationships with brokers and investors. You could be the totally. underwriter. You know, maybe you're analytical, and you do the underwriting. Maybe you're process-driven, and you handle the asset management. You've got some management experience or construction experience or project management experience. You could do the asset management. Lots of different hats you can wear, but you need to play to your strengths. Don't focus on building your weaknesses, because if you're playing to your strengths, not only do you love what you're doing? Because you wouldn't love it if you weren't strong at it, number one. And if you love what you're doing, you never work another day in your life because work is play, but you'll also be passionate, okay? If, you, if you're playing to your strengths, you're going to be passionate about it. And because this business is a team sport, if you're passionate, you have the ability to influence people, to work with you, invest with you, sell to you, whatever. And so, you know, playing to your strengths is super, super important. That's super so, valuable. I, I, that's one of the things that I've learned from you, Rod. Um, question for you in terms of the interest rates. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you you've seen a couple of this, a couple of these cycles in your career, right? Um, some are saying I've heard in some circles of investors that they they say, hey, we're going to see you shouldn't be getting into long term fixed debt right now because interest rates are going to come down once the elections come around. I've heard that. You've probably heard the same thing. Oh, sure, uh, sure. Most he... most of the operators are saying that. Now, oh. let me say let me let me say this. Okay, first of all, in the commercial world, interest rates are different than in the residential world. Like right That's now, correct. this deal we're closing on will be about four point seven percent. It's a fantastic interest rate, uh -huh. buddy. When I when I started in the business, interest rates were eighteen percent. This is nineteen seventy eight. Okay, eighteen percent. I remember doing freaking backflips when it got down to seven or eight percent. Okay, mm -hmm. so so you know this is uh, it's been really unusual um, these last this last decade. Okay, but but I will tell you, um, you know it's possible they'll come back down because I think they'll realize that that's not going to stop inflation, but I, I'm not sure what is. Okay. And so it's going to be real interesting to see how it all shakes out. I don't think the fed can fix this, but we'll see. I, I mean, it, we'll see. I, 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 but, uh, but yeah, if you're, I wouldn't do any super high interest rate debt right now, but you got to put debt on a property and like this deal mm -hmm. I've got in Nashville, I mean, we're putting 60% loan to value debt and we still have eight to 10% cash on cash. We projected. 
And that's conservative, super conservative. We've mm -hmm. got 16 to 19% internal rate of return, 20 to 22% AAR. And, 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 and those are conservative projections. Uh, we under promise and over deliver. So, you know, um, uh, in fact, if you're accredited, check it out, text the word partner to 72345 and take a look at it. We're halfway subscribed already. We've only mentioned it like Wednesday of this week and we're already half subscribed. Uh, so, but, so, uh, so for some of the listeners, why don't you tell them a little bit of just really quick 50,000 for view? Cause we have a lot of new people and maybe okay. some people don't know what a credit it means. Okay. What, sure. 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 Say what that means. And, and uh -huh. you know, for those that may be listening that don't. Sure. Know. Sure. So, so there's, there's the, in, in syndications. Okay. Which is what I, this is how I buy properties where you pool money from investors. There's two types of syndications. There's a 506 B and a 506 C. 506B was what I did for decades, um, where you couldn't tell somebody about a deal, you couldn't advertise a deal. Um, and, and then with the Dodd-Frank Act, um, you were they changed it and they added 506C, which is what they have now. So if you are a, a, a you know, a, a, a successful person, well, I, that's the wrong way to play frame it. it. Accredited means you make $200,000 a year with the expectation of it to continue, or you have a million dollar net worth without your personal residence. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're a business owner or something like that. Then you are classified as accredited. And if I just um, do business with people that are accredited, I can, I can advertise. I can talk about it on this podcast. I talk about it on my podcast. It's a beautiful thing, but, but, you know, I'm going to get investors that are a little more financially savvy. That's what accredited means. A non-accredited would be everybody else. Okay. And so, um, you know, most deals are done with non-accredited investors, 506B, people build relationships. And with those, you have to, back in the day when I was doing, started this business, there was what's called the three touch rule, where you had to talk to somebody three times before you brought a deal to them. Okay. Now you have to have a substantive financial relationship with, or under substantive understanding of their financial ability. Okay. So you give them a questionnaire and, and, you know, um, um, you, you cannot just first thing out of your mouth, talk about a deal. You can't put it on social media. If you're going to do a 506 B you, you can't, you can't, there's no way you've got that kind of a relationship with everybody in social media. So you want to be real careful with that. But if you do the 506 C with accredited only, then you can advertise it, shout it from the rooftops and all that. And I only do 506 C. Um, so I don't screw up, but, uh, so, so as you heard, and, and, and I liked for you to maybe, put that out there for my listeners is of any accredited investors you have a currently a deal yeah I, I it's a screaming deal i mean screaming deal 506c but if you're accredited text the word partner to 72345 and you'll be able to watch the webinar we just did on it wednesday night uh and you'll see what an incredible deal it is i mean it truly i mean we haven't factored in putting in garages there's a place for us to put garages in um there's already got some garages there's a waiting list and we're going to put three more with 15 garage bays in there um we're going to be able to convert a bunch of the two bedrooms to three bedrooms by putting up a wall and a door that that's going to raise four hundred dollars a month on 21 of those units that alone is about a million dollar increase in value i mean there's all this stuff we don't even have in there yet so it's really exciting what we're going to be doing there but uh by the way if you'd like to see how we present a deal, even if you're not accredited, you should go watch that webinar. If you go to creecapital.com, you can watch the webinar replay so you can see what we look for in a market, what we look for in a submarket, what we look for in a deal, the returns we look for. And it'll be really educational for you. Uh, and if you text partner, to, if you're driving and you can't write that down, text partner to 72345, we'll send you that link and you can go check it out and you should watch it anyway, even if you're not accredited to learn, you know, learn kind of what we're doing. So that's amazing. Rod, thank yeah. you so much, brother. Ladies, yeah. gentlemen, it, um, I'm, I'm glad to have Rod check out his check out his stuff. Rod, can you tell us a little bit again, how can people touch base with sure, you? Sure, sure. Uh, your boot camp, because I'm sure there's people listening to you. And um, yeah. guys, I highly recommend if you could do his boot camp, do it. Um, I've done it. I've done his live events. It's super valuable. I'm speaking from experience. And um, Thank you. you are the people you spend time with. You are the people you listen to. You are, um, you know, everything Rod said, we're totally in alignment in our values and our belief system. Thank you. In fact, so, let me, let me add to what you just said, who you hang out with is who you become guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was, when I was losing everything in 2009, I was in Tony Robbins mastermind. Uh, it's called his platinum partnership. And there were people there that were killing it then. I mean, they were like, and, and, and they were like, Oh, 50 million, get up your puss, go make it happen. That's who you want to be around <laughs> and what's coming guys. Okay. Your peer group is critical. And most people default to a peer group. They went to school 
school with or you know they work with not being proactive about who they hang out with so it's super important that you know you be proactive and be around people that think what you think is hard is easy okay that's who you want to be around so you know um and we we facilitate that in my boot camp so if you can come to my boot camp just text rod to 72345 rod to 72345 or go to multifamilybootcamp.com. Um, that link is also in my link tree, which is rodslinks.com. Now, the, Rod's Links has a ton of free resources, books, that goal setting workshop you can do with your family, just real powerful stuff. Um, and um, and by the way, if the price has gone up, which it's going to go up to 400 bucks here, if it's gone up, just DM me on any social channel and I'll make sure you get that $97 price. OK, and again, I don't sell anything there. It's kind of a duh if you're interested in this business, seriously, respectfully, just if you have any interest in this business, you need to be there. OK, 16, 18. It's drinking through a fire hose, though. I'm going to show you something. I'll show you something here real quick. Um Here's the here's the manual for it. OK, it's not like some fluffy. I'm going to tease you shit. No, no, it's it's everything you can think of about this business is drinking through a fire hose. So bring your A game. OK, that's all I want to tell you. And if you decide to come, I would encourage you to also listen to my podcast between now and then, because getting up to speed as fast as you can is super important. OK, especially in what's coming. And my podcast is called Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing. If you go to rodslinks.com, the, the link is there for that, too. But what's anyway, Martin, thank you, my friend. What's the date of your of your event? Oh, again? October 15th and 16th. Yeah, it's a weekend. 10, 10, yeah. 15, and for a little 10, bit more, 10, you can buy the recordings if you if you can't make it all weekend or whatever. Uh it doesn't, it's not much more. You can buy the recordings too. Brother, thank you so much for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Your knowledge, your wealth of knowledge is really, really um grateful here. Love to have you back. And I want to have you back here uh okay. to share your perspective. Um when we're in the thick of things, I think we're going to be in the thick of things next winter, figuratively. For sure. Know, oh, for know, sure. Winter, winter's coming. We've yep. we've learned that in uh in our business uh, mm -hmm. uh in our business business courses. mastery. Yeah, business uh -huh. mastery, right? Uh -huh. BM one. Uh, winter's coming figuratively and literally. I think winter's coming in uh, for our business here in, in yeah. this winter. And I love to have you back in the thick of things here. Um, we'll next make it year. happen, buddy. I'd look forward to it. Yeah, next year. So we can say talk about what you're doing and how things are going and how you're strategizing and what opportunities you're seeing. Guys, thank you for listening. Make sure you like, subscribe to this channel. If you if you're listening, make sure you like it and um make sure you check out Rod Cleves. I know he's got some podcasts on uh, his podcast on YouTube and on on all of your listening. iTunes, streams. Spotify, everywhere. Uh, yeah. He's everywhere. So make sure he checks you check his stuff out. And that that um uh that thing he was talking about that he does every week, uh five, what is it, the power? Five minutes. Oh, own your power. Yeah, the motivational power. That's, clips. That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. Go and check that out. Uh, vouch for that too. I, again, I studied with this man and um, everything he's going to teach you at the virtual camp. I did it live with him and it absolutely is drinking from a fire hose. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. Rod, thank you for being here, brother. Thank you, my friend. So guys, if you like this video you just watched, click on this video up here. It might be something you might like. And guys, I really appreciate you guys watching. Remember to like and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Peace out.